Or someone is walking up the stairs the very minute I hit record. A little bit of housekeeping before I get into the video, which feels very much in the spirit of Hannah Louise Poston, by the way. Um, I had made several references in previous videos of a get ready with me where I talk about what's kind of happening with my life. I have decided not to post that video just because topics that I talked about in the video are no longer relevant. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a brief synopsis of what I was going to say in that get ready with me here real quick. A lot of you guys already know this. I've mentioned this in videos. I am moving. I um, had talked way in the past in past get ready with me's about wanting to just pick up and go someplace else and that we had this area in mind. And we did that. Um, Matt and I found the apartment of our dreams basically and we're moving May 1st which is like a week and a half away from when you guys are seeing this and I'm very anxious and absolutely nothing is done. This may be one of the last times you see me in this background but I'm very excited about my new filming space. And I'm very excited about all of the opportunities that are going to come for me. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me and for all of the well wishes and for rooting me on and being there for me and just being kind and wonderful. I really appreciate the support I've gotten throughout all of this because it's been so stressful. But other than that, let's get into the video. Hi guys, my name is Lacey of Spookless and Fat Hips, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I haven't done a collab in like three months, and I love doing collabs. That's mostly because I am trash at keeping a consistent upload schedule, which I do hope to improve on, speaking of the move, once I get my new place, because I have so many filming ideas, oh my god. But, collab videos, I love collab videos, you all know that they're my favorite kinds of videos to make, because I love the community I have here on YouTube. And I'm so excited for today's video because I'm collabing with my friend Hannah, aka Hannah Louise Poston, here on YouTube. You guys, I was gonna say might know Hannah, you definitely know Hannah. You probably know her for her year-long no-buy that she was on last year. And now she's on a beauty budget for this year. And she is absolutely fantastic. Hannah actually kind of seems like someone who wouldn't be my friend, like at first glance, right? Because to me, she's so sophisticated and she has like this air about her that just feels like I'm like beneath her somehow. <laughs> and also, her, like, I feel like our content is like so brutal opposite of each other because she is going through this journey where she's examining her own spending and her relationship with makeup. Whereas I'm very much a collector and I'm like, buy all the things, review all the things, love all the things. But I love Hannah so much and we've actually become really good friends and I fangirl still every time she comments on any of my videos and I feel like she said the same thing about me, which is just too cute. We also share a lot of the same like world views. She's actually been a guest on the Half Cousins podcast before. There was an episode where her and I were just together and we really vibe on a lot of things. So like actually, even though on paper we might seem like opposites, we're very much similar. That being said, Hannah was the perfect person to collab with for this video. I should say thank you so much Hannah for collabing with me. Obviously Hannah's channel and video will be linked down below. But Hannah seemed like the perfect person to collab for this video idea. So what we're going to be talking about today is our favorite luxury products. I say that Hannah is the perfect person to do this collab with because I feel like the topic of luxury comes up very often on her channel and her relationship with wanting luxurious products and beautiful things definitely is a common theme in a lot of her content. So it was really interesting to sit down and get very introspective on like the word luxury itself because if you've noticed in the title of my video I put luxury in quotations. That was very much purposeful because I think luxury has this specific meaning to a lot of people. I think a lot of people's first instinct might be to think wealth. I definitely think that's a factor in how we view luxury. For me, luxury very much feels like I don't need this. Like for something to be a luxury means I don't need it in my immediate life to survive. I don't really need it for any purpose. It's just kind of an extra in life, a bonus. I think there's also a little bit of exclusivity that comes with the word luxury, like feeling like you're part of an elite group that gets to experience something that not everyone gets to experience. And for me, I think luxury also has a lot to do with how something makes me feel. Like, is it improving how I see myself? Is it improving how I think my status is being perceived by other people? 
these are all things that I think about when I really sit down and try to dissect luxury. Because really, I'm a makeup channel. Everything I talk about is luxury. I'm sure a lot of people view makeup that way. But you could also argue that given our society, given our standards for feminine beauty and how women are supposed to present themselves, not only in public but in the workplace and things like that, you could argue that makeup isn't a luxury, that it's kind of expected in our society. So there's a lot of layers to this, right? So anyway, before I continue ranting on, I've picked some luxury products that I want to share with you guys. And I kind of want to walk you guys through why I consider this a luxurious product, what I picked it for, what I use it for, how it makes me feel compared to maybe other products that I have, and kind of dig deeper into the word luxury in that way. Without any more talking, let's get into the meat of this video. See, I don't feel like I can say that. I feel like only Hannah can say that. I feel like I just sound stupid when I say that. One of the first things that came to mind when I sat down to write my list of my favorite luxury products was my Mario Badescu facial sprays. I believe in a past video I was quoted as saying that I had only bought the little tiny $5 bottles and that when I was done with my $5 bottles I was only going to invest in one larger size. Clearly that's a lie. I have three full-size Mario Badescu facial sprays. I have the facial spray with aloe, chamomile, and lavender. Uh, with aloe, herbs, and rose water, and with aloe, sage, and orange blossom. The real reason why this is included in my luxurious product list is not so much for these full sizes, though these kind of achieve the same thing. I keep the said $5 travel size bottles of these with me all of the time. I have one in my purse. If I don't bring my purse to work, I'll still put a travel size of this in my pocket. And throughout the day, I just pull it out and spray my face, which is not as so weird if you know that I work at a spa because we're very skincare focused more at my job. But like, I do that and it like calms me down. It helps keep my makeup looking okay. It brightens my mood a little bit. And then I even got my work wife, Danny, hooked on these as well. So she does the same thing. And if something stressful happens at her job, we'll just like quietly pull out our bottles and spray our face. These are not expensive skincare products. In fact, they're not even great skincare products. I've said in the past that the estheticians that I work with all kind of side eye me and my friend when we use these because it's not the best skincare product. I believe specifically they were upset because there's fragrance in this. That's why they were like, you guys need to calm down. But I feel like having I, this seems so ridiculous. Having a scented water, essentially, with like minimal skincare benefits, if at all, that you just are pulling out of your pocket and spraying to alter your mood. Literally, it serves no purpose. It's like exactly a luxury for that reason. And also, it just kind of feels bougie. <laughs> It feels like, look at me, look how much I know about beauty and skincare. I'm whipping out something from my pocket to spray my face right here, right now. And then I can even pick up a thing and fan myself and feel like all up about myself when I do it. That's kind of where I'm getting at with some of these more luxury products. This is not necessarily the cost or the accessibility of every product on this list, but it's that feeling of like, this is so extra. I don't need to be doing this, but I'm doing it to either treat myself or to make myself feel good. While I don't consider making yourself feel good or better to be a luxury, I think a lot of people definitely do. I feel like, especially with beauty YouTube, with makeup YouTube, it's kind of hard to, like, people, <laughs> going on a little bit of a tangent, when I did my makeup collection tag and I talked about how I, how I loved how large my collection was, People were like, oh, how refreshing, because I think for very good reason, because we're very, I think on YouTube, we're getting more consumer conscious. I feel like there's still this air of like needing to explain yourself and needing everything to serve a purpose, rather than just allowing something to bring you joy. I feel like I'm going on a rant. Either way, this is something that brings me joy that doesn't really have a purpose other than I like the way it makes me feel. That's why I consider this a luxury. Something else skincare related that I thought of when I was thinking of like that, that, you know, well, I hope you understand what I mean when I say that feeling of luxury, but that kind of like 
feeling of bougie that feeling of taking extra good care of yourself, which I think like I was saying before, it's sad that having to indulge in yourself is considered a luxury because I think so often we associate indulging in yourself with extra costs. And it doesn't always have to be that way. And I say that because I have these Miss Spa um, face masks. I got these from Target for a couple bucks. These are frequently on sale at Target. And there's nothing that I love more than to take up all my makeup, throw one of these on, lay in bed, put on a lo-fi mix, and just relax. And know that I'm getting something good out of this mask and that I'm doing something calming for myself. And it's just nice and it's simple and I think Affordable luxuries are things that we need to talk more about because I think, like I said earlier, indulging yourself is something that's worth doing because it's an overall long-term investment in your well-being. So if you can take five minutes out of your day to buy a dollar face mask and to enjoy it, that's a luxury that's worth it to me. This was something else that I put on my favorite luxury list that I want to... <laughs> Specifically, there's something about this This is why I feel luxurious. I think as I'm sitting here and I'm filming this video, I'm starting to realize that a lot of my concepts of luxury have a lot to do with my opinion of myself. That's very interesting. I didn't actually realize that until I sat down to film this. I feel like we. this is so such a side tangent, but bear with me, guys. I feel like we live in a society where especially as women, you're not supposed to care too much about yourself because then you're narcissistic. And also, if you don't fit a very specific societal standard, then loving yourself is not something that you're supposed to be doing. In fact, we did a whole Half Cousins episode about like body positivity and loving yourself. And that was kind of something that I touched on a lot in that episode, which is what brings me to this. This is my rump bottom rub from Lush. Again, not the most crazy expensive product, but the reason this feels luxurious to me. One, you all know my obsession with Lush, and when just just smelling this, I'm like, ugh, because I love this scent so much. I love this product so much. What this is, this is a bottom rub. It says, give your booty a boost with softening avocado butter, rose water, and aloe vera. This is on my luxury list because this is something that I just use for one area of my body, which is my rump, as the name suggests. And that is my favorite part of my body. I love my ass and my hips and my curves so much, which is why my channel is named what it is. That is why this is so luxurious to me. Like, think how extra it is to have one product for one specific part of your body that serves one purpose. Specifically, besides being a body lotion, this is also supposed to help with tightening and lifting. I don't know if it does that. But also with chub rub, because of the like feeling that the lotion leaves behind, it helps with chafing, which I do find it does that. So this is an item that was kind of middle tier, not expensive, but also not like drugstore prices, that I'm using just on one area of my body. And it's specifically my favorite area of my body. So I'm giving my favorite area of my body a little extra more, a little extra attention, a little bit more care. That to me is like the, like the definition of something luxurious. Like how not necessary is this? But it makes me feel so good. And I get to like enjoy my curves while I'm applying it. And I get to like feel good about myself and like remind myself that like my body is awesome. I'm really getting very introspective because really I didn't consider luxury to be something that was gonna like involve so much of my own self-esteem but I guess it does. I will say though I also did pick this so kind of getting away from what I was touching on earlier my Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy highlighter to me feels like a luxury product going on what I mentioned earlier because this feels exclusive, because you can't get this anymore, because it's so hyped, it had a re-release, it's gone even again. This is to me the most beautiful highlighter in my collection. I'm wearing it today and you can't get it anymore. So there is that kind of like feeling of being like in a club, like an exclusive club. Because I feel like from what I understand, there's something about human nature where we do all want to feel a part of something. We do all want to feel like we're a little bit like more special even if we don't want to admit it. So having something that's so coveted, having something that you can't get anymore, and then having something that works so beautifully on you, all of those things that combined that I talked about earlier, 
This definitely feels like a luxury product for me for that reason because it's so beautiful. So you're getting beauty and exclusivity. That's luxury. Having something that is like desirable that not everyone can get. That feels luxurious to me. Something else though that I put on my luxury list. This is something you can get. This is something that anybody can have and use and love. But the effect of this and how different it is is what feels luxurious about it. This is the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm All Over Veil Highlighter. How many carats? It's the one that everyone kind of lost their mind over. <laughs> it's super soft and it's basically just a layer of silver glitter. I don't even know if swatching it is going to do anything. This to me, side note, works best if I use either a wet brush or I set my face with setting spray first. Just a pro tip. But anyway, the reason why I picked this as well for this video is because this gives such a unique editorial look which side note reminds me so much of Hannah because anytime I think of like high fashion and editorial I think of Hannah but because it gives that kind of like show-stopping look it feels different than the rest of my makeup the rest of my makeup feels very mainstream compared to this this feels cooler I guess that's the word I'm looking for than all of my other makeup just different and people's reactions to it also kind of contribute to that because every time I wear this people ask me what it is because it's such a cool highlighter with such a cool unique effect. I'm not wearing it right now. I don't know why I'm gesturing. I should have thought to pair it over the Amorese highlighter. Is this all making sense? Are you, are you guys starting to get where I am on this luxury list? Because it's not all about just like what's the most expensive thing. We'll get there. But it's that feeling of like different and special. Special is definitely a word that we can equate to with luxury. Something that you don't see every day. Something that feels a little bit more elite. I think also having something that just performs really really effortlessly and well and above average like I was mentioning with the Fenty highlighters. It's different than everything else. Something that performs different to me like think like a luxury car a lot of people have those arguments that that's what makes the luxury cars worth it is because it operates smoother and easier that also comes into my luxury list a lot of like does this product perform in a way that outshines all of the other products i have and therefore it's worth maybe the higher price point that I might pay for it because if that is our train of thought then I had to talk about my Anastasia shadows I feel like just in general in makeup culture ABH shadows are so lusted after they're so hyped every time they release a palette it's just the biggest deal even if it's colors we've seen a million times everybody still kind of loses their mind over it I picked soft glam for that reason because definitely to me this is a boring color scheme but because of the brand and the and the reputation of the brand this was a big deal when it released and then I even saw it in stores and was like you know what I could use a good staple neutral color and bought it even though I think I'd actually anti hauled it at one point. But like I referenced earlier this screams luxury to me because of the performance because this is such a go to and because this is so effortless. I know when I use this palette that it's going to work. I know it's going to work in the exact way that I need it to work and I know it's going to work fast. ABH shadows are often the kinds of things that I reach for when I know I'm running late for work because I know they blend effortlessly and I can get beautiful gradients and I have beautiful options and I'll grab this to pair with other palettes if I feel like other palettes need a little zhuzhing up. And it's just so romantic and beautiful and I also think ABH has a certain status in our culture and in makeup culture specifically and there's definitely a feeling of luxury tied to status as well. I think ABH is considered a more bougie high-end kind of big deal brand. You see a lot more people trying to dupe ABH palettes. It's a bigger deal when people get a hold of ABH palettes like it just feels like a big deal. It feels like something, like I said earlier, it feels like something special. I hope I'm not all over the place. I feel like I'm all over the place. I also wanted to talk about these guys because they also touch on a lot of the themes that I've brought up when thinking about luxury. This is my Nabla Dreamy Eyeshadow Palette and my Lethal Cosmetics Hive Collection. First, I will show you my Nabla Palette. This is so beautiful. I love this so much. Matt bought this for me for our anniversary, actually. It really just has this beautiful, soft color story, and this formula 
works really fantastic, very smoothly, very easy to work with and very beautiful. Same thing with these lethal eyeshadows. These actually were also a gift and these to me also work so beautifully, blends so effortlessly, is such a gorgeous selection of colors and I feel very lucky to have both of these collections of eyeshadow. These feel like luxury items to me because they're from indie brands overseas. So it's not exactly the easiest to get a hold of these. I couldn't walk into my local Ulta or Sephora to grab these. I had to buy them online, pay the conversion costs, pay the extreme shipping and get them here. With the novel palette actually, it was here like the next day. It was crazy. When it showed up, I had to sign for it. I remember Matt saying, we've ordered things in Rhode Island that have taken longer to get here. <laughs> So kudos to Nabla, it literally got here in like like less than 48 hours. Even Lethal got here pretty quick too. But I think because these come from overseas and it's kind of this like beautiful indie formula and these like silky shadows and it's great quality and these are so well received on YouTube, there is that feeling of like bouginess. I don't know how else to explain it. There's this feeling of these are gorgeous, I own two pretty, hard to get, kind of pricey things. And when I wear these products, that translates into my, my mood. I feel how I imagine people who carry Gucci bags might feel. Like I feel like, look at me, I'm wearing these lethal shadows, look at me, I'm wearing these novel shadows. If people ask me what they are, I'm gonna be like, oh, they're from this indie brand from Italy or from this indie brand from Germany. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's that kind of like snootiness almost that comes with having items like this and wearing items like this. Full circle though, because again, that goes about your own perception. So I guess if you're not like a materialistic person, you don't think about these things. It doesn't matter, but because we're so heavily inversed in such a consumerist society where your worth is so well represented I guess in the objects that you have and possess and what you can peacock off to other people like it would make sense how having something kind of special like these can therefore affect how you feel about yourself because it's not probably what you're feel feeling about yourself it's how others are perceiving you and how that therefore is making you feel about yourself. Does this all make sense? I'm like working this out in my head as we go. I will say though for my final luxury item, my Natasha Denona gold palette, which I'm gonna hold like this because the reflective packaging is ridiculous. We can all take a moment to just stare at this beautiful color story, which when I first saw this online, I thought that is stupid. I'm not spending that much money on such a boring color story. And then I saw swatches of it and then I saw looks with it and I was like, I absolutely need that. And this is my favorite grungy palette that I own in my entire collection, maybe next to like my Melt Gemini palette. I do love my Gemini palette so much. This and Gemini are definitely neck and neck. This palette is so special because of the formulas in this palette. You definitely get a variety of textures, which I feel like makes this very unique. And what I mean by textures is you kind of get this like smudgy, dirty, glimmery, super metallic, like there's so, there's a lot of layers to this palette. The mattes gradiate themselves, so you don't need a lot of mattes, you don't really need a transition shade. You have these special like topper shades, but then you also have these deep rich metallics. So the looks you create with these are so striking and people stop you and go what is that on your eyes and you feel like you're wearing $120 eyeshadows on your eyes and you can't help but have that feeling of like oh, I have a Natasha Denona palette and other people being like oh my god you're wearing a Natasha Denona palette and just like that like I mentioned that kind of statusy kind of feeling with this but it's nice to have something where the performance backs it up I think a lot of more luxury products serve the same kind of purpose that all other things in that same category can serve your pain for a name. Not to say that you're not paying for a name with Natasha Denona and not to say that other things can't do what this palette does, but I do, I maybe because I do have that number in my head of how much this costs, I can't help but feel like this is just a little bit nicer than other eyeshadows in my collection or that it is just a little bit more special or a little bit more worth the price and the investment 
than other things in my eyeshadows. And I know I'm not alone thinking that because people view that about Natasha Denona, but people also say that all the time about Pat McGrath's shadows because her stuff is so expensive, but people always talk about how you can't duplicate her special shades, that it's so like unique and like game changing. For me, I feel like this is a very game changing palette, that this is also very effortless, that I can reach for this and know that it's just gonna work and it is just gonna make me feel that kind of way of like this is a pretty special thing that I can't get easily and now that I have it I have to cherish it. In conclusion <laughs> I really feel like I was all over the place in this video. I really want to like think more about just in my own life this kind of air about luxury that I've kind of described throughout this video because like I said sitting down to make this video I didn't realize that a lot of my feelings of luxury were going to be so introspective and were going to be so deeply tied to like my own confidence and how I feel about myself when I'm using these objects but it's also like I reference very societal. Does stuff mean anything really if we're going to go there? Who's to say you know? Something that I can consider so special and important might not have that same meaning for you. Just because I thought it was worth putting money into doesn't mean that you shared that. This was all super interesting. I wasn't expecting this video to have the outcome that I had. <laughs> Definitely talk to me down below about what the word luxury means for you. Is luxury strictly about the cost for you? Is it about investing in something that not everybody else can get their hands on? Whether it is because of the price or the availability of it. Is it about the way that it makes you look visibly to other people, the way that you feel about yourself when you're using it? The kind of indulgence that I talked about because it is kind of weird to think that indulging in yourself is a luxury. That's such a crazy thought to me. Is that weird for you? For me to really sit and think about that because even think about like spa services, right? Sp say, I work at a spa, I've referenced it a million times. That to me is considered such a luxurious thing but really it's an overall investment in like my body and my skin. Crazy. I didn't think about any of this before I sat down to film this video. Please talk to me about this down below. Thank you so much to Hannah for wanting to collab with me. I can't say enough how glad I am that we got to do this. Hannah and I had been planning this video for months and then we both just had various things going on in our lives. And then Hannah moved and I'm in the middle of a move. And I just like, it means so much to me, Hannah, that you'd want to do this cloud with me because I admire you so much. I think you're just such a fantastic creator. I love what you're doing on YouTube. I love your content so much and I just love you so much. You're such a beautiful person, which is a great perspective on everything. And I'm going to get gushy here, but I just like, I'm so lucky that we're friends. Thank you. If you liked this video, if you like collab videos, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. To see all the bougie things I do on a daily basis, you can follow me on my Instagram, which is also Speakless and Fat Hips. Like I said, this may very well be the last time you guys see me in this background. I'm planning something very different for my next apartment. I definitely am probably going to film more while I'm still in this house though because I do definitely need to film my declutter and I definitely need to do that soon because I have a week and a half to move, oh my god. But other than that... That is all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys!